What's up guys and welcome to the channel. Today I'm back with another comparison video for you looking at two of the best up-tempo shoes on the market. In one corner, we got my old flame, my old boo, the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3. And in the other corner, we got my new thing, the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel V3. Let's get into it. So the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3 holds a very special place in my heart. When I was training for the Charlotte Marathon last year, this was my primary shoe. I used it for easy runs, I used it for long runs, I used it for tempo work. I was pulling for it heavily. I recently picked up the New Balance Rebel V3 as a replacement for the Speed 3. As I'm trying to shift away from using some of these rockered, bouncy Piva shoes in my training. Now the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3 is sitting in that endorphin family from Saucony, which is their fast training and racing lineup. It's got 100% Piva midsole and a nylon plate. And the Rebel V3 is in New Balance's fuel cell family of shoes, which all have the same super critical foam in the midsole. And it's designed for faster training. All right guys, now let's get into the midsole of these shoes. So you will see that the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3 has this beaded Piva compound. It is very soft and squishy underfoot. You can see as I'm pressing it in here, we're gonna get some nice give in there. The Rebel V3 has a very similar feel, at least in hand and a bit underfoot too when we're going on some, some slower miles and some easier paces. These are both really nice and soft, squishy midsole foams. The main difference is this one is a Piba and this one is a super critical TPU and EVA blend. So Piba is gonna have a bit more energy return. It's currently the top tier foam on the market. This super critical foam, that means it's been injected with gas and this is also a great foam, but a bit softer, not as much pop and snap as we're seeing from the Power Run PB over here in the Saucony. Now in terms of the ride, the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3 is really characterized by this rocker up front and combined with the nylon plate and the super foam, it has a really snappy feel. So at slower paces, it's encouraging you to pick it up. It does feel comfortable, but it's almost like a dog just scratching at the front door ready to go fly out that gate. That's how this can feel a little bit at those slower paces. Still pretty comfortable, but with the rocker and the plate and the super foam, very bouncy and very excitable. When you do pick it up into those faster paces, it feels really good. For me, I like it at around marathon pace. Anything faster and it's a bit too squishy for me. I'm also 6'2", 160 pounds with a lower cadence, so I put a lot of force into my shoes. And when I go faster than that 650 per mile in this, it feels a bit soft for my taste. I like something like the Adidas Takumi Sen or a bit firmer. Got the new Brooks Hyperion Max in, so I'm thinking that is gonna be the replacement for this and then Takumi Sen for those faster efforts. Now the New Balance Rebel V3 has a nice, soft, comfortable feel at every pace. I really like this for everyday running shoes because it feels more minimal. Now this has 27.5 millimeters to stack in the heel and 21.5 in the forefoot, so it's a lot lower than we're seeing in this, which has about 36 millimeters in the heel. So the Rebel V3 is much more minimal, a lot more ground contact coming through here, which depending on your preferences could be a good or bad thing. I'm really liking that right now. I'm enjoying how this is making me feel more connected to the ground, a bit of more natural sensation and helping me build out those lower leg muscles around the ankle and Achilles to strengthen my running. I've had no issues with stability in this at all. They did widen out the heel a little bit from that V2 and with the nice fuel cell foam, it is compressing it's not overly squirrely or anything if I'm landing closer to the back and when I'm landing closer to the forefoot I'm getting a nice bounce and pop there is a small rocker on here but it does not feel like a heavily rockered shoe in contrast to the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3. So both of these shoes have an engineered mesh upper you'll see the Speed 3 is pretty airy it's got all these little holes nice and stretchy the New Balance same deal here but this is one of the first shoes that I've used where in these hotter summer runs, I can feel my sweat cooling in the bottom of the shoe and it's just kind of disgusting. It's like I'm running on a sponge. I, I don't know what happened with this, but it's the first shoe where that's happened. So I don't know if the upper is overly heating my foot or if the sock liner that they use in here is subpar. I will say it does feel a little bit hard compared to the other sock liners 
like I have in the Saucony Endorphin series. New Balance, if you're listening, maybe put a more premium sock liner in the Rebel V5. I know the V4 is coming out soon, it's probably too late, but call the plug in China and switch out the, the sock liner in the next one. The other thing that's kind of weird is, I don't know if you all can see this, but the I'll throw up a, an iPhone picture I took the other day if you can't, but the upper around the back here got stained red with the dye from this insole here. So everything is just wrong with the insole, but that's kind of sloppy, right? If you're not testing your dyes and your paints during the manufacturing process to see if they're gonna wreck the uppers of your shoes, like come on New Balance, you, you gotta do better than that. Anyway, the fit of the upper is really good. It's wide, I got this a half size bigger. I like how the toe box gives me a bit more space with that half size up. And it's a nice and comfortable platform that I do think will be okay if you have a wider foot. All right, outsole and durability, my favorite section. Now this guy right here has 300 miles on it. This one has about 60 to 70 miles, so not comparable wear. This one, I wore through the back outsole in 300 miles and you can see the foam is getting pretty chewed up around the back here. I have another pair of, of Speed 3s, which same thing is happening at around 300 miles. It's time to retire these. I put a lot of use on them. Uh, on this one, nice and protected here through 60 miles. I am seeing some wear. You can see in this lateral heel area, which is my biggest wear section of the shoe. It is starting to smooth out a little bit, but some of y'all in the comments said this would stop around 150 to 200 miles. So we'll see how that goes. In general, the Rebel has a much better covering of rubber than the Saucony does. I mean, look at that. The Saucony has this strategic rubber up front and the Rebel has more of these solid chunked pieces. The way that the Saucony's is applied as well is just, it's not that thick. So if you are a heavy scuffer, you can expect to get about 300 miles out of this. And for me, I do feel like the foam is starting to lose some of its cushioning abilities at that 300 mile mark too. So it's firming up a little bit. And if you're going for a shoe like the Speed 3, one of the main reasons you wanna get it is to protect your legs from some of that impact. So for me around 300 miles, it's losing that shine. I'm interested to see what this one will do around that 300 mile mark because that's where I typically tend to retire shoes. So it'll be interesting to see how this fuel cell evolves and whether it's still giving me some of that impact absorption. Though this is a more ground feel shoe just straight out of the box. In terms of who these are best for, the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3 is gonna be good for you if you wanna do it all shoe that is cushioned, and also if you don't mind running with the plated shoe. Me personally, I'm not running in any plated shoes right now because I wanna work on strengthening my lower leg muscles and my Achilles, and the plated shoes do some of that work of running for you. But this is gonna be great for speed work, great for long runs, and also if you're looking to run a marathon in three hours or more, this could do that marathon racing for you as well. And and any shorter distance races. Rebel V3, on the other hand, is gonna be a good option for runners who want a more minimal ground feel snappy shoe for everyday running and some faster work. I did a two by three mile workout in these the other day, it felt great. If you are trying to build strength and rely more on your own legs to run than a rocker, I go for the Rebel V3, mix it in the rotation. You could also mix and match shoes like this to help round out different parts of your running tool set. All right guys, there you have it. That is a comparison of the Rebel V3 and the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3. Let me know in the comments what you think. If you've tried both of these, which one is your favorite? As always, thank you for liking, thank you for subscribing, and I'll make sure to keep you up to date on the latest and greatest in the world of performance running.